Baptist. Right, we'll get underway. Thank you, Stuart, when you're ready. <laughs> Welcome um, councillors and members of the public to the community wellbeing meeting and welcome to those joining remotely. Are there any apologies for the meeting please? I have apologies from Councillor McFowl, Councillor Richard McFowl and Councillor Phillips. Any other? I think we're all here apart from that. Would someone like to move the apologies please? <coughs> thank you Keith, thank, thank you Ben. Um, all in favour, apologies are accepted. Please say aye. Against, carried. Are there any declaration of councillors' conflict of interest for this meeting? There are none. none. <coughs> Excuse me. Minutes of the 21st of February were confirmed as a true and correct record on the 18th of April council meeting. Today we have four items on the agenda. And there's a slight change in the agenda. Um, item three, the review of over 80 swimming will be taken first and we'll change that with the GDC Reserve Management Plan. So without further ado, because we've got one hour for this meeting, I'll just call on Kylie to um, present her report. Thank you, Kylie. Hi, everyone. Um, We've had over 80s free parking for over a year now, a free parking, free swimming, and aqua aerobic. So Martin did want to be here, but he's got staff shortages at the pool. So we just wanted to um, report back on how it's going um, and the benefits that older people have seen in the community from um, allowing the free swimming um, so we've had 463 visits from over 80s and 30 individuals in those visits. So it's been the same people using it over and over, which is awesome. Um, the feedback's been really positive. Um, we've had comments like, absolutely fabul fabulous. It has allowed me to go swimming every day, whereas before I could only afford to come a couple of times a week. I have been telling my friends about it. It is the only exercise I can do that isn't painful. Um, it's a lovely gesture. I would hate to lose it. I love it. Um, and also, I just love it, and it's a great innovation. So the pool staff and Ready for Living are really happy with how it's gone. Um, Money-wise, I'm sure you're interested. So we've had a loss of revenue of 2,142 dollars over the year that it's been operating so yeah. any questions are there any questions for Kylie no thank you very much for, for your report Kylie and I see that um, the over 65 year olds would also like to have um, swimming fees cut but just not sure that in what that what we're looking at in our rates that um, we will be discussing that but we could take that to the long-term plan process. Just thinking Madam Chair you might have to uh, first ascertain conflicts of interest and it might disqualify a number of your committee <laughs> Thank you very much, Kylie. Great report. Um, so we now move on to the workforce plan um, report. If I um, point of order, um, yes. there, there's a recommendation the report be received, and prior to the report being received, I would like to comment, please. Yes. And that is that this is a, a, a clear example where the social benefit that comes from providing facilities free for particular groups in com the community is well worth the cost it is to council and it's something that I fully support. And we should be possibly looking at in other cases as well. Yes, thank you very much, Councillor Hovell. And I'm happy to move the recommendation. Thank you. I have a seconder, please. Thank you, Councillor Reid. All in favour? 
you have a comment? Could I just add a recommendation there as well? Uh, Madam Chair, you mentioned around the 65 um, age and above age group potentially wanting these same benefits. Um, could I add a recommendation uh, that we look at the 65 and above bracket as part of our long-term plan, uh, making that free as well? You'd like to move that? Are you happy to add that to the recommendation? And you will second it, Councillor Hovell. Um, I'm, I'm happy to add it to my motion. If I've passed a, a made a motion, I can't second an amendment, so I'm happy to add it to mine. So the seconder for that amendment was Councillor Reid. Are you happy with that amendment? Absolutely. Thank you. All in favour? Aye. Carried. <coughs> So we now move on to the workforce plan, which will be presented by the manager, Ann Puller. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, on your agenda, you have the Gore workforce plan, which has been 10 months in the making with a few hiccups because we've had some shortages in our team of staff, but we've, we've got there. Um, there's been a raft of work done in this space in Southland with a lot of different agencies. So. The aim of this was to pull all of the work that's been done and get a core position of what's happening. Um, it was very much about looking at what needs to happen from a development, um, attraction and retaining skills in a competitive market uh, that would help our local economy. So we actually did two business surveys over the last two years and in August we'll be looking to do a further one. And um, this has informed a lot of our work that we've been doing in the business space and also with Meal Task Force for Jobs. Um, I've given you, I printed it out, which is an A3 strategy and a page, um, to make it easy for you so that you can just see. But the majority of our businesses in Gore District have um, a staff of one to five, and there's six businesses that have over 100 staff that they employ. Um, so the, you'll see what the key challenges there that the strategy identifies is very much around attracting, uh, recruiting and training staff, but also retaining them as an issue. Often we get, I and mean, when we talk to the larger businesses, people will come to Gore District maybe for a two year period and then they may leave and it's part of a progression in career, is what we're, we're seeing there. There's also um, this, the perception around certain industries. Uh, I've just been at health localities today and when we were talking about workforce, there's various perceptions about going into health sector at the moment, and it's similar for the farming community. There's quite a lot of discussion around the ageing workforce, and this is coming up in the Ready for Living strategy. That piece of work's happening right now, and that document is actually in draft going to the working group this week and then back to consultation with um, the stakeholders, which is an agency group and 50 older people in our community that have been giving up their time for the development of that piece of work. So we've had some really good feedback from their perspectives of being older and what they've experienced in the workforce. And then this document has very much given us the business perspective um, for that sector. Um, when we're attracting people here, the attractive lifestyle of Gore District definitely comes up. Um, Businesses see the, the key, some key opportunities around digital technology and um, developing up appropriate skills. Uh, then if on the right hand side of that page just gives you a snapshot of the sectors, so working with job seekers and those are some of the things that we plan to do. The older persons I've covered off, Rangataki, that is very much the work that we're doing in Merrill Tussles for Jobs and we've just completed our third year. Um, the first two, we had outcomes set at 50 for each year, which we well and truly had and surpassed. This year, uh, was sitting at, we had funding for 35 outcomes, and um, we're sitting at 34 right now, and the year finishes at the, on Friday, and I'm pretty sure by Friday we'll have that 35. Um, we've got five people in, in, in interview stage right now. The Māori piece of this strategy has been developed with the Hokanui, Ranga and um, Mirahaku region uh, through Ivan Hodgetts and he's also very involved in the Ministry of Education. So a lot of the actions within this section will be in partnership with them. 
Currently in our district, there's a very small number of Pacifica. The current stats say 1.1%. Um, it'll be interesting when we get the census to see what our data is actually looking like. But that area is very much on our radar because of RSE workers, and there has been RSE workers that have come into um, Gore District, and we need to be in a position to be able to support both the business and those people coming into our district, because they're generally here for a shorter period of time, and it's how um, we integrate them into the community and what processes we have. And that links nicely into the work that we're doing with welcoming communities. Um, people with disability, the disability, a part of our work in the workforce actually ties in through male tasks for jobs because they shifted the criteria last year to enable some of that funding to assist people with disability into work. When we did the business survey, there was a high percentage of businesses said that they were happy to employ people who had disability. So it's really about linking people up. Migrants, um, this ties closely into the welcoming communities work. Um, it crosses over with REC, but it also crosses over when, um, like I think Alliance was bringing in people from Asia for a workforce. We also end up having people on our books that actually their partners have come in here and they have a work visa or they've become a resident and um, their partner is looking for work. So um, the whole accredited employer process, for some businesses don't want to do that process anymore, so that actually restricts who, where people can get placed. And then just that I've made the comments already about retaining a workforce, which is important. You'll remember when we uh, looked at the funding for Great South, there is the discretionary funding piece of that agreement, which is $60,000, and we've had a discussion with them around the attraction and retention work that they're doing and having a specific piece of work for Gore District. So that is how that will tie, those, those organisations will tie together. Thank you very much, Anne. <coughs> That's a very comprehensive report and it, um, it shows all the work that's gone on behind the scenes. Thank you. Is there um, any questions for Anne? Councillor Hobell. You have highlighted that the district's employment rate is 73%, roughly. But the area that we pull in employment from is wider than the Gore boundary. And I'm just wondering what employment numbers or percentage that work in Gore actually live outside and where are our strongest linkages mm -hmm. to? So those uh, statistics are really all we have available through Stats New Zealand, but we're very aware that our community of interest is greater than the district boundary. And in saying that, under mural tasks for jobs, um, we have worked with the likes of Menzies College and um, we're currently working like with Fonterra. Um, so there is crossover from outside the district. And if you take Mural Task Force as an example, there's been situations where we may fund a business that's outside the district because the employee is within the district or vice versa. Yeah. So it is difficult to get that data. Right. Um, I, I, I have just finished uh, reading a document that's been released tomorrow, which is the Beyond 2025 document. And it has a number of actions in it. Mm -hmm. And the synergies between what's in that document and what's here uh, overlap um, to, to a considerable extent. And I'm just wondering if it's worthwhile this committee actually receiving a report once the um, Beyond 2025 document is released that actually picks up some of those linkages at, at the higher area, um, looking at how do we integrate what's happening at the regional level with what's here. And I understand there is a, a, a Southland um, workforce plan, um, and um, there, there, there are some gains to us in the district, I think, by just drilling down a bit deeper into the various documents and making sure that we're integrating them to our full advantage. Thank you. Councillor Havel, just mm. ask. Um, so as part comment? of this process, we've worked closely with all of those documents and all of the people behind those documents. Um, Bobby Brown and I have had a discussion uh, again this week about when Beyond 2025 is 
released um, coming to council and also the discussion around having infometrics come as well because they have produced a range of reports that have informed that document. So um, the intention is to you know, do that, basically. The other comment I should just make around Mel Task Force is um, just yesterday that we, we heard that we will have funding for another year. Our funding in the past has been 500,000 for each year. It will be considerably less, so it, the potential is that it's under um, 200,000 this year with outcomes of 24 people into work. Um, we currently have 24 people on our books that we're working with, so we'll easily meet that target. Oh, that's a shame. <coughs> <coughs> Any further questions, Councillor Reid? Thank you, Madam Chair. Just a question to Anne. Um, the people with disabilities that employers are looking to um, have in their premises, is there any funding available for those businesses to um, put in wheelchair accessibility or toilets, things like that, any extra for people, businesses in the community? Um, there's various streams of funding, but we tend to refer either the business or the person to Workbridge in the first instance, because they will be um, working with the person. Um, yeah, there is a range of agencies, but it depends on the specifics, yeah. And I guess, too, there's no guarantee that that employment would work out. But it would be nice to think that it made it easier for some to be able to get yeah. jobs. So under Merrill Tussles for Jobs, there's flexibility about what we fund and what we support. And sometimes that support is actually to the business to do something like that. Um, it might be setting up a workstation, it might be some specialist piece of equipment or the, the funding can be directly attributed to the young person. And th in that case, it um, generally would be around training. But like we have had instances where somebody started work and needed glasses, discovered that actually they couldn't see well enough to do the job. So, and they didn't have the resources to get glasses. So that was an example where, you know, because that program is all about getting sustainable employment for a young person. Yeah. Thank you, Anne. <coughs> Any further questions? Councillor McKenzie. It's just a comment, really, Anne. Um, we want people to come here and stay, accommodation. I know some employers use that as a um, method of getting people here, but how we achieve that, I'm not 100% sure, but it's just a comment I'd like to add. If it's a, a little extra we can add to the process of, well, hey, look, we can get you accommodation, whether it's helping people get into a house or temporary, that, that sort of thing. It's just a comment I'd like to add. That's <coughs> I'm happy to receive that comment. We um, definitely have had instances in our team where we have had people that have come into the area and we've found out about them either through welcoming communities or through the business getting in touch with us saying they were struggling with accommodation and through our wide networks we've generally managed to eventually sort something out but um, we don't have an active program around that. Thank you. Thank you Anne. Any further questions? Yes your worship. Thank you, Chair. Uh, not so much of a question, but just a, a comment and a, a congratulations to, to Anne and the team for completing this. I know this has been um, an enormous amount of work and a, and a, a huge task um, undertaken, but there's a lot of information in this workforce plan that really going to be really useful um, for our long-term plan discussions and moving forward. I, I guess I just wanted to build on uh, Councillor Havel's comments um, around Beyond 2025 and this workforce plan. Do we think it's best to have it come to council or for it to come to an LTP workshop? That can also be publicised so the, the public can, can see us have a conversation about it. I just There's a lot of detail in both this and, and beyond 2025. Um, I'm not too sure which option would be better and if we need that in a recommendation here today. Would you like to comment to that, Anne? Or go back? Uh, I think it's really up to the Chief Executive and the yeah. elected members what you yeah. would like to do. Mm. There is clearly some strategic um, issues 
both in this document and in the other ones that have helped inform it, like beyond 2025, that are central to the council moving forward with its long-term plan. But at a day-to-day -day implementation level, there's, there's a whole series of things that we as councillors need to be thinking about across the board and through our different committees. Um, so I see two distinct layers that, that come out of both this document and, and, and particularly the priorities where it lists high, medium and, and low. Um, uh, I think as, as um, uh, councillors we should be looking at, at both. So I'd like to see the long-term plan looking at some of the strategic issues um, and a report to council actually looking at some of the, the more day-to-day -day implementation ones. And there are differences. Thank you, Councillor Hovell. Would you like to comment, Steve? Yeah, thanks, Madam Chair. No, I agree with Councillor Hovell that um, this uh, workforce plan will be useful to, at the high end to actually feed into the LTP uh, workshop type discussions. And I've actually got a memo for councillors for the first for the next workshop is the LTP uh, next Tuesday. Um, so this is all about what type of community you want, what are the issues, uh, how can the council enable things to take place uh, in a timely way. Uh, and then of course there's the nitty gritty on the ground stuff which Anne and her team will implement. So I, I do agree in that sort of two tiered approach. Um, but there's a lot of good information here uh, to propel the community forward. Any further questions? Yes, Councillor Reid. Thank you, Madam Chair. Just another uh, question to Anne, and it's probably not around the workforce strictly, but given that we've got um, a quickly ageing workforce and population, probably one of the highest in the country, um, the volunteer base that actually underpins a lot that happens in our community, how do you see that working um, when people start becoming leaving the workforce, are they still going to volunteer and do many of the jobs in the community that um, younger people perhaps don't have time for? Uh, actually, in the Ready for Living strategy, one of the questions we asked um, our older working group, of there's 50 people in this that we've been liaising with, was around volunteerism, and there was a mix of responses. So some people said, don't want to bar of it, done it, all my life running around after my kids for sport and all the other things and now it's my time <laughs> um, there was other people that said when you move to Gore it's very difficult to become a volunteer you need to be asked um, and then there was other people who just didn't understand that position that said it was very easy to become a volunteer here so there's a there's a quite a mix of <coughs> opinions within our older community around um, the voluntary space. There is a piece of work that under just transitions and beyond 2025 that they have been doing in the volunteerism space, but we haven't yet seen the outcomes of that. So that may um, inform us a little bit better. Yeah, but there will be some discussion coming around that in our older people um, in our community. I'm not sure that answers the question, but it gives you as much as we have right now. Thank you, Anne. Any further questions? Would somebody like to move the recommendation that the workforce plan be adopted? Thank you, Councillor Reid. Seconder, Councillor Hovell. All in favour? Against? Carried. Are there any further comments about that recommendation or the um, workforce plan? No. Thank you. We'll move on to... Uh, we'll, we'll do the... Do the, re, um, the workforce plan report. We've done that. Sorry. We'll do the review of the... Um, Gore District Council Reserve Management Plan amendments. We have four recommendations in that plan and I'll just ask the um, report from the Parks and Reserves Manager, Keith McCrobby, if you'd like to comment on that, please. Uh, 
Yeah, yeah, just through you, um, <coughs> Madam Chair, um, just a bit of background to the management plan process. Um, I think Gore District Council has been well served by uh, previous Parks and Rec managers, and um, I think going back probably to Gordon da uh, Bailey's era, um, yeah, there, there's been management plans in place, and um, I think through the whole time, um, a, com a company called Exist um, have been involved in the review. So, um, yeah, the current plans were in place, uh, were approved in 2016, and um, I think they're, they're classed as what you would call omnibus um, management plans. So the volume one is um, around general policies uh, around parks and reserves. Um, volume two is around individual reserves, so it's a smaller, smaller reserves. Um, volume three is um, the Greenbelt Reserve, so that's essentially from um, Eccles Street Playground right up Bannerman Park and Preston Street, so that's that, that body of or that, that group. And then the final volume, volume four, is Donnamore Park, so that's quite a um, significant park in its own right and quite um, quite unique compared to the others. So, um, so Exist have, yeah, have, have been involved um, for a long time, so that they, um, yeah, their current staff were involved in the 2016 um, update, and um, so we, we, we've reviewed it, them again with EXIST. Um, in terms of the, the work involved, um, one of the initial things was through Neil Mayer, and that was around um, leases and buildings and structures on, on reserves, so there's, uh, obviously that sort of needs updating on a relatively regular basis, and um, Neil's tidied up that space considerably. So, um, yeah, some of the information is probably well, it's a whole lot more accurate than it's ever been. I would suggest um, the next um, item was really around the images of the um, of the reserves, which were on the uh, management plans, and um, I think the previous aerial. Photographs were all done around 2002, so we're probably quite out, out, out of date. And um, so, the, yeah, the, the 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 aerials were flown last summer, I think, or previous summer, and so a whole lot, a whole lot more accurate um, in terms of, um, I guess, boundaries and things like that. So, yeah, it's a very 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 good. Um, the next item was around. There was a whole lot of recommendations and um, programmed works, um, and some of that, yeah, that's just really been an update. So some of the work has happened, some of the work hasn't happened, um, some of, some of the work is no longer relevant. So again, that's been updated. Um, and then the, the last thing that I guess that happened really is um, we have to consult with. Um, Tangata Whenua, so there was a discussion with Ricky Parata and his team, and they've come forward with a whole lot of recommendations. So, um, and I'm, I'm not sure of um, how that compares to previous, but um, you know, I would suggest there's, there's a number of things in there that, um, by way of example, um, you know, one of their recommendations is that um, the Runanga should be consulted. Regarding events on um, all, all events on parks and reserves, so um, I'm just I, I think while it, while it's a legitimate um, request, um, you know, practically speaking, um, I'm not sure if they've got really any interest, say, in um, the park run at Hamilton Park on a Saturday morning, or um, or the rhododendron day and you know, go public gardens in October. So, um, so I, I think there's um, there's certainly some work to be done in that space. And, and the other the other one that I think probably raises its head a wee bit is is, is around the um, I guess the use of dual language on park signage. Um, yeah, we've probably got a very small number of new signs that have been done uh, using the. Uh, Council's sign manual, um, and, and there's 
there's a small amount of uh, Maori phraseology on those, but you know, the, generally our signs really are, um, uh, you know, probably 99% in English. So you know, it's 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 um, it's a big journey, and it's probably a, a much wider issue than that sits just in, just in the park space, really. So. so um, yeah, so I, I think yeah, there, there is there is definitely some work to be done um, between council and uh, the, the Runanga just to just to work through, uh, you know, I, I guess the, all the requests really. So, yeah. so that's thank you. Thank you, <coughs> thank you, Keith. Excuse me. Any questions for Keith, please, Councillor Reid. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, just around the. Renunga, going forward, would we be looking at, would that be something in the LTP that we could be looking at to have both languages incorporated on new signage in the parks and reserves? I think it's a wider issue, really. That, yeah, yeah, you know, I think that there needs to be a... a conversation. A conversation, yeah. 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 No, good. Yeah. Councillor Hovell. I've, I've got three areas I'd like to explore as part of um, this report. Um, the world has changed a lot since 2016, and the way that our parks and reserves is changing as well, um, both in terms of the membership of organisations that are using them, ageing of, of population, and I, I think it's desirable that, that we actually give an opportunity for the users of our parks and reserves to have some input in to this process. What's set out in, in the report is that under section 5A of the reserve of uh, section 41 of the Reserves Act, um, council was not required to give people the opportunity to comment, but I believe we should. And under subsection 9, we're able to do that if we're of a mind. Um, what is required in, in, in terms of what's set out there is, is giving public notice of the intent to review the plan and providing an opportunity for written suggestions as to things that should happen. And I, I believe we should be giving the opportunity to the public to speak up in terms of the things that have changed, what the people's users' aspirations are of the parks. Um, so from that point of view, I would actually like, um, when I get to the end, to um, move as part of the recommendation that we do um, provide an opportunity for the public to um, can uh, give comment. The second matter I want to raise is in relation to dogs. The Croydon Bush Recreation Reserve and the Conservation Management Strategy allows dogs um, to be present in the reserve. And um, as a rhetorical question, I would actually like to see some public discussion about the extent to which dogs are permitted in our reserves. Um, Gore has a slightly different approach to a number of other areas and uh, there's less opportunity. Um, on one day I was going to take my dogs for a walk along the um, dock um, reserve area and um, decided to go out to um, uh, the park and saw some signs on the council land saying no dogs. Um, so I was left a little bit confused and, and I'd like to see some public um, discussion take place on that. I would also like to see some public discussion take place on the um, bilingual sign issue. Uh, it is wider than reserves, um, it, it could apply to a number of things, but is the um, reserves a nice tidy package in which to consider it? Because I believe the cultural values that are assigned to many of our reserves and the like uh, are different to other situations and it may be that they are a, a, a different um, a thing to consider altogether. The um, next point is, I'm interested in terms of, and again, it's a rhetorical question um, for staff, um, but I believe it highlights the need for um, more public input. And that is, what regard was given to the Gore Parks Recreation and Facilities Strategy of 2019? Um, for example, in that strategy, it talked about additional seats and, um, and, and parks and the cemeteries. It talked about review of pay, um, play equipment in, in some areas. And at page 53 of that document, it refers to a rationalisation of assets, reading the quote, where oversupply or redundancy is identified. 
I think that the reserve management plan process is the opportune time for us to consider the reserves that we hold and whether we, uh, it is appropriate to have them um, moving forward. Bearing in mind the management plan continues for 10, 20 years. What is the structure we want for reserves? We have some of the highest um, areas of reserves per person of, of um, the size district. Do we need them all? Um, are they in the right place? Maybe some of the reserves that we've got, like we did a swap um, on, on other land, uh, can be swapped over. Um, and the, um, that strategy also highlights what's been talked about before, uh, a trend in more passive recreation. And again, does that mean that we should be looking at slightly different approach to our reserves? So taking those things all together, I'd actually like to see the public having an opportunity of providing comment and for a more thorough um, uh, drilling down um, of the reserves assets that we've got and what framework do we want moving forward. Thank you, Councillor Hovell. Um, would you like to comment to that, Steve? Where would be the best place to drill down on parks and reserves? Well, I think, uh, Madam Chair, what uh, Councillor Hovell raises is a, um, a interesting point in terms of how we uh, go about our decision-making process in 2023 versus what may have traditionally been the, the case under the Reserves Act, which of course is written in 1977 language. And so the, the ability of people to actually participate in the process and come forward with ideas is generally considered to be um, best practice in the modern era. Uh, so therefore, I think um, it wouldn't hurt us at all to actually uh, go down that track and, and ask uh, for the public's input before we come up with a draft and before it then goes out for formal consultation. Because as Count Hovell correctly um, surmises that recreation changes uh, and there could be things that we haven't thought of that uh, members of the community might might suggest that uh, should be catered for in a specific reserve or reserves generally. So um, I can't see any harm. In fact, I only see just a lot of good coming out of an early community engagement, getting some ideas, and then finalising a draft, which then goes back out to the public for formal consultation. So that would mean we need to change the recommendation. Um, want to. Recommendation three. Yeah, yes, um, with some new yeah, wording. Fo following any other comments councillors have, have got, I'd like to actually um, play around with um, what the recommendation is, please. Right. Thank you, Councillor Hobell. Yes, thanks, Councillor McDonnell. Oh, I support the, what Councillor Hobell has said. I just, uh, so, but I want to actually just hone in on one point here, I mean, it'll become very obvious. The Plunkett lease has expired on the society and the building is surrendered. I want to know, uh, perhaps from Neil or someone, what are we going to do with that building and can we do something with it that actually makes money <laughs> rather than become a liability that we're going to maintain? Uh, through Madam Chair, the situation at the moment with that building is that it was just recently um, Plunkett abandoned it. It was set up for the sole purpose of a Plunkett reserve, but for several years, they've probably been not quite abiding by that in the means that midwives were using it, which are not directly Plunkett. The building has been used for storage at the moment, and but it is able to be moved and there has been discussion in the past of possible areas elsewhere in the council where that building could be moved to. But I can't say any more in the open meeting because it is just um, ideas. So no, it's not going to cost uh, be languished there because really it needs to be removed so we can revert that back to a, its proper reserve status. Thank you. Thank you, Neil. Hey, yes, Your Worship. Thank you, Madam Chair. I just had a, a number of questions, or one question and one comment. Uh, page 10, uh, 5.2, 1.5, um, 
that is the Richmond Street Community Centre. Um, point two's been removed that says no new buildings will be erected on this site. I was just wondering why that is. Uh, page 10, uh, point five, point two one, point five. Is through the chair, um, when I was going through this original documentation, um, I believe that at that time this was just changing the information that was on in, within the document, and there was no new buildings looking at going on that land. We've demolished two um, in the last few years to tidy it up, and then um, there's no plans for any any other buildings to go on there at that stage. Okay, so it's not a restriction, it's a, it was, that was, there was no plan to be any new build. Okay, cool, thank you for that clarification. Um, the second one I was more of a comment and it kind of builds on from uh, Keith's points around a bit more further work with the, the Hukunu Runanga. Uh, so page 24, uh, point D, um, it states, or the, the recommendation states, uh, if no suitable occupier can be found in the building or structure cannot be relocated and there's no reasonable foreseeable use for the building or structure, then it will be offered, offered to the Hukunu Runanga. Uh, and then it goes on with, if the Hukunu Runanga decide to uh, decline the offer uh, to acquire the building, then it will be demolished. I just had some concerns with that around um, maybe the, the timeline of how that would work. I just think of things like the the Matoda pool where we've decided to demolish it. Um, the way I read this, um, and the pool may be a bad example, but the way I read this is that we would have to offer it to the Runanga, and they may want to use that building, um, which means we then can't demolish and use that land for other other purposes. Um, is that is that other people's understanding, Keith, or of, of that part there? Yeah, just through, uh, Madam Chair, um, th this is just what they've requested, so it, yeah, it's, it's certainly not um, in play as such. Really. Yeah. Cool, I'll just highlight that as a concern then moving forward. Thank you. Thank you, welcome um, Councillor Richard McPhail. Are there any other questions? Councillor Hovell. Just, just before I um, put the, the motion um, I'd, I'd be interested in some feedback from councillors in terms of um, what input they would like to have to the preparation of the draft. Uh, is this a case where possibly we should be looking at a subcommittee or do we leave it to um, staff to work away and then come back? Um, there's some benefits in either direction and um, yeah, it depends on the mood of councillors before I with the recommendation. Would it be better that this was decided at a full council meeting, Councillor Hovell? Uh, in order to do that, then it would probably be appropriate to still put a recommendation in there for council to consider. <coughs> and I can word it along those lines. So if, 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 if it's agreeable, I'll, I'll move um, three motions, if I may. So you're changing the recommendations that yes, the four yes. that we have, yes. except the last one? Um, I, if, I'll take you through step by step. Okay. So with, with the first recommendation, um, uh, I, I would move that the council resolve to review the Gore Preserve Management Plan volumes one to four, full stop. Number two, that the council resolve in accordance with section 419 of the Reserves Act to seek um, Written, I just want to use the section, uh, the words that are here, um, that the council seek written suggestions, um, for, and it doesn't matter from it, so uh, the council receives written suggestions on, on the future use of reserve areas. Number three, I don't believe 
we need at this stage that is appropriate once a draft has been prepared and, and reported back, nor do we need number four at this stage. Um, but given the conversation we just had, a, a new number three, um, that the council give consideration to the establishment of a working party uh, to assist staff in the preparation of the draft reserve management plan. Yes, Steve. Just one suggestion, Madam Chair, to assist the council and staff in providing clarity. Uh, would the mover prefer to change the word rather than consider developing a, or a working party to a will establish a working yes, party? Yes, because we can still have that conversation. Yes. yes. Are there any questions or comments from. Well, I've moved it, so I guess we need a seconder. Seconder, Your Worship. Any further comments or questions? Are we all in favour? Do we all understand the recommendations or would you like them read back? Yes, please. please. First one is that the council resolved to review the Gore Man Reserve Management Plan volumes one to four. The second one was uh, that the Council resolve in accordance with section 41.9 of the Reserves Act to seek written suggestions on the future use of reserve areas. And the last one was that the Council establish a working party to assist staff in the preparation of the draft reserve management plan. Um, do we need actually written suggestions from whom? The public? Ratepayers? Do we need that put in there? Could you use your speaker, please, Councillor Hogan? Yes, um, seeking written suggestions in terms of section 41.5 of the Reserves Act, and that sets out step by step. Thank you, Councillor Reid. Is that clear to all the councillors? Happy with that? All in favour say aye. aye. Against? Carried. And welcome, Councillor Paul McPhail. Our last item today is a six monthly report from Active Southland, and I believe that's um, Parks and Recreation Manager. Is that Keith? There is nobody here from Active Southland. So we'll just take the report then as read. Yeah, my, my apologies, I haven't even read the report, so I'm on. <laughs> sorry. We'll take the report as read and um, Ask for any questions, please. I'm happy to move the recommendation the report be received. Thank you, Councillor Hover. Seconder? Your Worship, thank you. I'd just like to say that I think physical activity is great for our, um, for our school children and our children, and, and learning how to swim, I think, is most important as well. So it's a very thorough report, and I think it, it um, does assist the health of our, of our children. I too, um, I look forward to the um, the funds when they're available to upgrade Oxford and Hamilton Park. I think um, that's a very good idea to help with disabled children and 
other children that can't use the park and some new equipment. So thank you, councillors. So that brings us to the end of today's meeting. I have Councillor Vow and you seconded it. Oh, all in favour? <laughs> Against? Carried. Thank you for attending today and um, thank you for coming along to the meeting and I'll close the meeting. Thank you.